In this video, we're creating water jets coming out from thin walled pipes in a concrete structure. Hello, and welcome to a video tutorial with Marklin Oswita. Yo, I would like to start this video by sending out a big thank you to the 13 people who signed up as patrons since the last video. Your support together with the other patrons are really what m helps me uh, maintain a good technical level and renew equipment whenever necessary. So a big thank you to you. Uh, this video Actually, I was down to Copenhagen helping a company out there who's uh, they're building a which will be a public layout later on, and uh, I was there for five days to to help them out with some creative input on how to solve different things. <laughs> One of those were uh, a light lake area on the three bridges, and uh, I did some yeah some uh, water installations there, and I just took a, a, sh a short uh, video with my cell phone. Uh, very simple and, and upload it on Instagram and this <laughs> video had like 10,000 views over, over the first hour so and I got a lot of questions on how it was made so that kind of well uh, let's make a YouTube tutorial on this topic so let's go the concrete parts in this uh, diorama will be made from styrofoam. This can be bought in your DIY store. This sheet here is uh, 2 inches thick, which is 50 millimeters. In order to reduce thickness, I use a styrofoam slicer. The shiny metal wire you see here is a Cantal metal, and I feed uh, 4.5 amps through it. And then the rest here is just a piece of wood to keep it all in place. And if you hold it, the wire is stretched. Now, if you want to keep control of the thickness, you can use L-shaped profiles. These are aluminum and I've made cuts in them for my standard dimensions. We're going to cut this one to 6.4 millimeter. Uh, the other dimension here is 12. So I put it in, I slide the wire in to the slots, power it up and then we can start cutting and the cutting process is kind of quick and this special cantal wire can be bought in one meter length from companies like Distrolec at a low cost but it's a very efficient tool for this type of work. Next we can slice the dimensions of uh, the concrete parts I prefer using a, a razor blade for this cutting because it's uh, very sharp. Now we got the pieces ready. I glue them together using PVA glue. It's equivalent to Elmer construction glue you have in the United States. Uh, this is uh, necessary because um, you can't use anything else than water-based glues with styrofoam. So now they're in place. Leave it to dry a few hours. Then we're going to put some putty or plaster onto it. This is plaster from a DIY store used for um, plastering holes in your walls before you redecorate. Uh, you can also use the landscape plaster from the manufacturers if you like. The important is that it uh, has a, a level of texture, surface texture, so you get that concrete uh, look-alike uh, surface you desire. With the surfaces sanded smooth you can paint it using a gray paint. I typically use a flat gray which I add half a drop of green paint, olive green, into. That gives it a warmer uh, grayish um, tone which is uh, at least very close to what concrete looks like uh, in the area where I live. So just cover the entire structure with this gray paint and while that is drying we will make the tubes, the water pipes. It can be somewhat hard to find really thin walled tubing in your hobby store um, but it's easy to make using landscape foil. This landscape foil can be bought from the manufacturers doing hobby materials such as Woodland Scenic or Noch. So what you do, you just cut a piece, use a template, uh, in this case I use a pen, and I just uh, wind a few turns of this uh, 
landscape foil cut where I want the joint and then I glue the joint together using fast set glue. Now the joint will not be perfect of course, um, it's uh, kind of impossible, but it doesn't really matter because we will have this joint facing downward so it will be hidden by the water beam. Okay, so I make two of these for my installation here and what we need to do of course is to paint it. Um, well, I'm thinking this is a kind of iron based uh, pipes or tubing so I paint them in a, a rust or corrosion brown burnt amber. So just give this a layer using a wide flat brush like this. And you will have a matte corroded surface both on the inside and the outside of both the pipes. Now leave these uh, to dry uh, for uh, an hour or so or use a hair dryer to speed up the process and we can start the fitting. So I'm just trying out. I'm not making any measurements or anything here. I'm just uh, placing them onto the concrete piece to see where they seems to be yeah, that looks great. Then I just push onto the, the tubes. So I get a mark in the concrete and then I remove the pipes again because it's much easier to do the weathering of the concrete um, without the pipes than with the pipes. So for this, I'm using three colors. This is uh, black, burnt umber brown and the cavalry brown, which is uh, kind of reddish brown well so first i'm starting by adding streaks of black make sure to wipe off most paint from your paintbrush to get uh, this um, thin low density streaks so i take a just a tiny portion of each color now i move over to the brown add brown first here under the the pipes because I kind of think that uh, the water which has been running around the pipe and down on the concrete has left you know, corrosion marks. And then I move over to the Cavalry Brown or I would say fresh oxidation red. So adding some of that also on the wall to get uh, some typical concrete wall appearance. If you like, you can also add moss in the bottom of the foot of the concrete at this point. But I'm since this is in water, I will just have it this way. I'm finishing the works with the concrete by painting the base of the pipes, the inside of the pipes black. This is of course so you don't see that the pipes are ending by the wall of the concrete. Then we can glue the tubes or pipes in place. So I put a drop of facet glue onto a surface, dip the tubing and then push it in place to the concrete wall like that. Same with the other tube. This way I avoid getting too much uh, glue onto the sensitive uh, styrofoam and also I get the position all correct. Now, ready to glue it in place into our uh, diorama or actually this is on my little railroad. So, same here, I glue it in place using PVA glue and then I fix it with pins until the PVA glue has set. Then I add some additional PVA glue on top of that and I sprinkle in some small stones I picked up on my driveway and paint it in matching color. Once the glue has dried, these, um, the appearance of these uh, rocks can be uh, adjusted with dry brushing to your liking. The base material in the water jets is surprisingly enough um, uh, landscape foil. Why is this? Well, the, the gel itself is not rigid enough, so it will not hold the shape over time. Uh, the water jets themselves will be made on a piece of uh, transparent plastic. 
I will uh, tape down this plastic uh, sheet onto a piece of black cardboard. This helps me to see what I'm doing. So let's first fix this um, plastic onto my black cardboard. And here is the, the gloss gel we're going to use, which will be the transparent part of the water jets. This uh, gloss gel, gel medium from Liquitex, is a firm gel, so it doesn't float. It will stay in the shape uh, more or less which you make it. Uh, so first I'm adding a tiny bit onto the plastic just to make these uh, pieces of uh, landscape foil stick to the plastic so they're not moving around while we're working with them. And then I'm adding uh, another layer of... Uh, kind of rich layer of, of gel on top of the landscape foil and uh, then we're gonna add the white pieces the foamy part of the water this is uh, aquarium filter or filter wool it's very similar to what you find also in pillows the microfibers in pillows but this one is a bit stiffer so it's easier to work with. It doesn't uh, collapse the way uh, pillow microfibers does. So if I am to choose, I prefer the filter wool for this application. So all you need to do now is to work uh, that uh, filter wool into the gel. Add extra gel if needed. And then when you're happy with the shape, leave them to dry overnight. Once dry, we can glue them in place using fast set glue. So I add glue here on the inside of the tubing, peel the water jets off from that plastic and push them into the wet fast set glue inside the tubing. When you feel happy about the alignment and placement, you cut the end off using scissors and then add extra gel at the landing point this will fix the beam to the water surface and also here we're adding a portion of uh, filter wool to give it a kind of foamy landing area the surface foam will be simulated using a white acrylic paint which i will stipple on in a circular pattern Make sure not to have too much paint in your brush. It should just, um, well, almost be like uh, dry brushing. You can also lift the two foam bowls a bit, uh, stippling under them. Now we're ready to add some waves or ripples on top of the surface. I do this uh, using the gel. Again, the gloss gel in a circular pattern around each of the landing bases of the water jets. Now, this gel will uh, turn transparent as it dries and it will also shrink somewhat. But I make the waves less and less significant the further away I get from, from the landing base of the water jets. So this is what it looks like when applied. Now we can work a bit on the surroundings. I'm adding moss to both the concrete structure top here and also on the top of the stones. And the moss is um, woodland scenic fine turf in the color of burnt grass. So a bit on the top of the stones here as well. And on the sides on the surrounding ground to your liking. And that uh, concludes this uh, build. All right, so that's a way to make water jets for your model railroad. Uh, did you know that this uh, channel is totally dependent on support from its patrons? So uh, if you want to be one of the good guys, get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from like, you know, $1 per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialogue found in the video description below. 
And if you haven't uh, yet become a subscriber, <laughs> please subscribe to this channel and enable that little bell and you will get a notification once the next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya!